Pennsylvania, and in this uh, two weeks following Independence Day, you do a lot of thinking if you are like, as I assume my friend did, you were a part of an Independence Day parade, and a lot of patriotic Americans out there, particularly, frankly, in flyover country, who love their country, want to defend their country, and they just want their life back. That's it. They want that American dream back. And by God, I'm going to do everything I can do in this godforsaken town to give them their freedom back, to give them the American dream back. I don't care who gets mad at me. I don't care who is worried about what bill he or she didn't get across some finish line that nobody in America generally cares about. We are going to fight to change this town. Conquer or die, as General Washington said. The fact is you have to ask yourself the question, are you free? Are we free? Are we free if you pay taxes to a school that teaches your children that your country is evil or that there isn't a difference between man and woman and you can't even talk about God, much less pray to God? Are you a free American if that is what you're dealing with in the schools? Are you free if you want to simply have a vehicle to move around to carry out your livelihood to provide for your family and you can't afford one because a bunch of elitists in Martha's Vineyard decide you've got to drive an $80,000 battery-powered car? Are you free if you're worried that your streets are unsafe, your border's wide open, and you're endangered, and fentanyl's pouring into your communities because your government refuses to do its one basic task? Are you actually free? Are you free if you just want to go to the doctor of your choice and you're prohibited from doing so because the government, regulatory, state, and corporate cronies have combined to make a whole lot of money while you can't go to the doctor of your choice? Are you free? Are you free if one president is treated differently than another president by the system of justice reporting to the president? Are you free? Are we living in a free country? Are you free if you simply wanted to go about your way of life, but your government said you couldn't unless you stuck a needle in your arm by a vaccine created with full liability protection and then mandated by the very government, say you've got to take it, and if you don't take it, you're going to lose your job? Are you free? No, you're not free. And it's about damn time that we live free again. That's why we're here. And again, to my colleagues on this side of the aisle, I don't care about your checklist of stuff you want to campaign on. I don't care about what you don't want to vote on. I care about one thing and one thing only, and that is living free. It is our God-given right. It is what people bled and died for. Living free, imperfect, in a sinful world, but free. And that is our calling. That is our duty. Our duty isn't to get reelected. Our duty is to fight for the people who sent us here to fight for them against a cultural elite who wants to rip away their lives. And that is what my mission is every day when I wake up in this godforsaken town. I yield back to my friend from Pennsylvania. Well, I couldn't have said it better. I watched a, a movie, it's been out for some time, but the question from the wife to the gentleman, well, he said, uh, he asked what he should do in the situation, and she said, it's not what a senator would do, it's not what a leader would do, it's what a free man would do. Amen. And that is the decision, that is the decision. That's what drives me, that's what drives my colleague. That's what we think should drive everyone here. And sure, we would love to have the approval of the body, of our compatriots here. But what's more important to us is that we do the right thing on every occasion. Not because it's easy. Not because it's tough to message it back home. 
or not because somebody's going to, you know, not have one of their programs funded at the level they want it funded at. We are way beyond that now, way beyond that. Our country is perilously close. We are borrowing money to pay our bills. We don't even print the money anymore. They just create it digitally. We don't even print it. It's so much. And no one around here seems to care. When we talk about saving $100 billion in the face of them spending $4 trillion, they recoil. How can we do that? Six, ago, six months ago, we were spending that amount of money, and you'd think that we were asking them to literally give their firstborn child or their right arm to try and get somewhere closer to living within our means. It is unacceptable. The time is now. The urgency is now. You cannot be free if you can't afford to live free. You are not free if you're not making your own decisions. That's where we are, Mr. Speaker. It has to stop here. It has to stop now. Well, I thank my friend from Pennsylvania. I think I've got less than a minute left. And I'll just close with this. As I said before, as General George Washington said on July 2nd, 1776, 247 years ago, on the day we actually declared independence, the fate of unborn millions will now depend under God on our courage and our conduct. We have therefore to resolve to conquer or die. That is why we're here. I yield back, Mr. Does the gentleman from Texas have a motion?